Ciao soccer fans and welcome to the Italian Soccer Addict broadcast. My name is Graziano and I'm your host. Coppa Italia play on Wednesday and a big match between Roma and Fiorentina highlights the show this week. Plus lots of news off the field and a trivia question for you at the very end. So stay tuned. News flash, news flash. Soccer emerges from the dark ages. Yes, this Friday, Gianni Infantino, the new head of FIFA, announced that soccer will finally be getting some video technology and possibly some video review in the coming future. Also, with some of the changes, they're looking at changing the offside rule, the handball rule, and the substitution rule. I tell you, this couldn't come at a better time, considering that all the other major sports, hockey, football, baseball, tennis, rugby, have embraced technology with some great results. All I can say is, thank you, Johnny, it's about time. At the end of his conference, uh, they interviewed Seth Blatter and asked him about these changes. And his comment was, when did they invent the video? On Wednesday, Coppa Italia started predictably with the Milan drubbing of second division Alessandria 5-1. Milan's only hope of a trophy this year saw them field a lot of starters. It worked, as they are now get to play in the final on May 21st. The other matchup saw Juve take its three-goal lead to San Siro to face Inter. After losing to Juve last week in league play, Inter put on a super effort and scored three goals to push the match to penalties. But Juve haven't lost to Inter since 2004, and the trend continued and they beat them 5-3 on penalties. In City A, uh, the first game played was on Friday between Roma and Fiorentina. At stake was sole possession of third place and a Champions League berth. At the Olympico, Roma didn't disappoint. Spalletti's men continued their torrid pace and earned their seventh victory in a row. Yet another outburst of goals saw them beat Fiorentina 4-1. With these goals, Roma now leads City A uh, with 59 goals. Once again, it was the Egyptian connection leading the way with Mohamed Salah getting a brace and Stefan El Sharawi scoring one and setting up the other. In this version of history, it's the Pharaohs who are conquering Rome. On Saturday, Napoli kept pace and continued to hold down second place with a 3-1 victory over their best Yanera, Gelo. Gonzalo Higuain's goal season lead the league with 26 goals. Then on Saturday, Juve showed again their class and power by going into Bergamo and beating Atalanta 2-0. They are now undefeated in 18 games and are three points clear of Napoli in the standings. One streak though that did come to an end is that of Milano's, who suffered their first defeat since the Bifana, a 2-0 loss to Sassuolo. In the Postigipo, or the late game, Inter hosted Palermo, only early, go early goals by Mijajic and Icardi sealed the deal and Inter cruised to a 3-1 victory. They are now four points ahead of their Milanese cousins for the last UEFA spot. Other matches saw Torino tie Lazio 1-1, Sampdoria 3-0 over Verona, Carpin Bologna 0-0, Frosinone beat Udine 2-0, and finally Genoa 1-0 over Empoli. I haven't seen so many zeros since my grade 9 report card. This is the did you know part of the show. Last week Barcelona tied the record for consecutive victories with 34 and this week they broke it with 35. However, there is an interesting fact here that of the five major soccer leagues in Europe, the uh, longest streak, winning streak for a team is held by an Italian team. Yes, in 2011-2012, Italy's Juventus went 43 games without a loss. And finally, a trivia question for you for you to think about next week. You can put your answers on my Facebook page. This week, someone quoted of all people, Mussolini. Yes, I want to know what was quoted, and I want to know the nickname of the person who quoted him. Put these comments on my Facebook page, of course, after you give me a big like. Ciao, see you next week.